Hello, and please allow me to apologize for the quality of my microphone. I'm using the Vive Pro 2's built-in microphone as the mic on my headset is broken at the moment. So let's go ahead and jump into Pavlov real quick. Now, with this new update, unfortunately, I now have to do a UAC prompt every single time I launch the game. So something important to consider if you don't already have it, you may want to get something like Virtual Desktop, which is what I used there. This is Virtual Desktop Dashboard, which allows me to see my desktop. It's about the only program I've ever used that allows me to click yes or no on a UAC pop-up. You know, one of those pop-ups to allow admin rights. It's very, very useful. That way I don't have to take my, my VR headset off and go to my computer to click yes on a stupid pop-up. Now, this is unskippable, and it is really annoying because you have to sit here and wait for it to disappear. This is all stuff we all already know. That was at least skippable. And now we're, we're in Pavlov, and I just want to say they have destroyed the performance of this thing. In fact, it's even worse with the latest hotfix. They did something on the CPU side that just the FPS is 34 right now. 34. That's insane. I mean, I was able to get the FPS up to 120 before the hotfix. We seem to be capped out on a, a CPU core. We seem to be running one of them at 100%. I mean, it's hard to be 100% certain about this, but there's a very hefty CPU usage on, like, two cores. That's causing us to just be overloaded on the CPU. Unfortunately, that's that's frame times, right? So it's just taking too long to process something on the CPU. And I don't know, this looks reasonably smooth. But every now and then you'll see a stutter and you'll realize it's reprojecting. It might be more obvious to you viewing this on YouTube than it is to me in the VR headset. Now, I assume that this is a new menu. Here we have notifications. You can mute them or unmute them. You can delete all of them. Don't have any notifications right now. But let's go ahead and go into the settings first. Now you can set a percentage on your movement vignette. I hate vignette of any kind. And in fact, in VR, it actually gives me a headache. I have to have it off. So first thing I did was uh, when you first launch the update, there will be configuration stuff that pops up and walks you through it. And if you select advanced, I think it turns this off by default. Now you can change your startup behavior, tell it where you want it to spawn you. You can spawn in one of the shooting ranges, you can spawn in the main menu, whatever you prefer. Of course, we have some of the options. Post-processing is on by default. I turned that off to try to get better frame rate, but I don't think it affected it. Player, not a whole lot in here. I mean, I don't imagine most of us have a virtual stock, but I know some Pavlov players really like those. I don't know if hand smoothing is good or bad. I, I haven't tried it off. I haven't really played Pavlov in a long time, so I don't remember how much of this is in here by default. This was on by default, but smooth turn was not. I hate snap turn, so I turned on smooth turn. It's, it's not working here in the menu, so I can't demonstrate it. At least not at the moment. Video, unfortunately, I don't know how many video options they had before, but now there are only three. Anti-aliasing, textures, and effects. Textures defaulted to... Everything defaulted to ultra for me. I've got it on high. Anti-aliasing I've actually disabled in the Unreal Engine config files because screw that shit. I think it's temporal anti-aliasing. The only options are low, medium, high, ultra. It doesn't say what they are, but if it's the default Unreal Engine options, then low is usually FXAA, medium is higher quality FXAA. 
and then high in ultra or temporal anti-aliasing or TAA. And I absolutely hate temporal anti-aliasing. Now audio, we have a few more options. And in fact, it was just by default configured for maximum quality, which is fine for my computer. Although I am kind of curious. Turn this off. There's no apply button. No. Doesn't seem to have. I don't know if these actually change in real time or if you need to restart the game. It's not affecting this CPU issue that we're having with the game. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and jump into training, I think it is. Yeah, the shooting range. Sometimes it gets a little wonky with the menus. Now, when we get in here, we can definitely tell there are performance issues. Yeah, there it goes. It's having all sorts of weird issues in the headset. I don't know if you can see them in the video. Our FPS is even lower in here. I don't see how this game is going to be playable at all. I really don't. Um, so, you know, we have our... Oh, hello there. Yeah. yeah, once upon a time, you could press a button on your controllers to drop your magazine. Now you have to pull it out with your hand. They did say something about controls. Uh, it doesn't... Before, you could grip with your your hand, right? And it would stay until you hit the grip button again. But now, now you have to hold the grip button, which is unfortunate. And like I was saying, they said something about the controls. So let's let's go in and see if we can fix. Oh, dear God. I don't know if that's coming through in the recording, but it's stuttering all over the place. How bad is my 29%? Oh my, that's a reprojected frame that it's stuck on. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Let's close the overlay or the dashboard. To be fair, I don't think this specifically is a game problem. Uh, any game that has a low FPS, I've noticed when recording Steam VR will wig out when you're in the dashboard. Can we? Close this, please. I'm not certain, but we may have gotten a new reprojected frame there. No, unfortunately, I think we're stuck. I wonder if we're even still recording anymore. Wait. Oh, we're out of the dashboard. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue that's exclusive to Pavlov, but it makes it really hard for me to record fixing the controller bindings. Okay, it is on default. So... These are the default controls. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to record this. Okay, let me close the overlay again. Give the game a moment to breathe. We'll try again. Just close all of this nonsense. Okay. So the way the controls work right now, if I grab this with my grip and let go, this happens. And in fact, I now cannot pick this up permanently. I can grab it with the grip, but again, if I let go with the grip, it falls on the ground. If I grab with the trigger, it tries to it tries to work the bolt handle. But if I come up on the wall and grab with the trigger, now it's permanently in my hand until I click the grip button and it drops it. So the way to pick things up permanently now is apparently with the trigger, which is very annoying to me. I would have to customize that, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to as badly as it was performing. Now, it's the same with the accessories. If I just pick them up with the grip, I can't put them on the gun. They just fall on the ground when I let go of them. So I have to click the trigger. But they don't go on the gun, right? So when you get the accessory near the gun, press the trigger, and it'll go on the gun. 
In fact, you can sometimes take an accessory off of the off of the gun. Maybe replace it with another one. Although I don't think this. Oh, this one does allow. It. Okay. Now, in the case of of optics, I found if you keep the trigger pressed down, you can slide the optic back and forth. So if you like the optic to be farther away while you're shooting, you can have it all the way to the end, or you can pull it back. To get it a little closer to you. And a lot of these accessories don't go on every gun. So this is the only other accessory that I know of that goes on this one. Now, this gun has a rail on either side, but I don't think you can use the rail on the right side because it always goes on the left. And I kind of have the same issue with every single gun here. I, I cannot eject a magazine because if I hit the magazine eject control, it pops up this stupid menu. And if I press the shoulder button or menu button, these are Vive Pro controllers, by the way. It doesn't eject the magazine, so I don't know. I actually cannot cannot reload the pistols at all. They're not reloadable, because you can't grab the magazine out of the pistol. Here, we'll just grab a 1911. See, if you try to grab the mag, it just reaches for the slide instead. And you can't eject the mag, and you can press anything... You Wait a minute. What did I press? Okay, what the hell happened? I don't know, I can't get it to happen again. Maybe you hold the grip? Never mind. I have no idea how I just ejected that magazine. Yeah, it's not happening again. Weird. Very weird. Anyway, one issue that I'm seeing is that, yeah, you know, we don't have... Uh, angle control. So this is me holding the controller comfortably. And this is what you have to do to get the gun, you know, to aim straight. So this is this is a little unpleasant to have to do. Well, I've noticed they've moved the gun offset adjuster over here. I don't know when they did that. But if we go to tilt, use your right stick to adjust tilt. So if I just hold up on the right touchpad, there we go. And we can apply. Now, for some reason, there's no way to go back. I don't know why. But this gun will be like this from now on. Headshot. Yeah, that's much easier. So if I go and pick it back up, much better. But that doesn't actually apply to every gun by default. So this gun is still aiming down. So if you just want to do it to all weapons, there's a checkbox down here. And we can angle this back up. It would really be nice if I could close this again. I have no idea how to. I don't know what gun this is. Some kind of Browning design. Possibly an FN, but I don't see an FN logo on it anywhere. Just a serial number. One thing that's annoying about the frame rate being this low, throwing things doesn't work very well. <laughs> Did it go through the floor? Let's see what a grenade is like. Well, that worked okay. Some of the stuff I was messing with earlier wouldn't fly. It would just kind of fall right out of my hand when I tried to throw it. But now everything's kind of over-exaggerated. Oh yeah, this is... This is annoying because there's no way to reload this either. So you have, what, five rounds? And then 
you know, what do you do? Somehow, somehow I managed to get it to, um, What the hell? That's another gun. Oh well. So unfortunately, yeah, I was gonna show off how the game didn't perform well after the update, and then that hotfix they had, what was it yesterday? Or the day before, I, I don't even remember, worked things even more. I mean, this is terrible. I don't know, maybe if I, my resolution is kind of high at the moment. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Okay, come on. I just want to lower the resolution a little bit. Might have been a really bad idea to try. I'm not going to be able to click anything like that. Yeah, we can see two CPU cores are pegged at 100%. There's just too much, like, single and, and two-threaded kind of nonsense. Oh, wait. Wait, can I do it? All right, you can see my resolution is 2636 by 2636 per eye. It is way too high, I think. So let's drop this down into the 2200. So 2204 by 2204 per eye. So let's do that and then exit the game. And once it starts responding, okay. I think this is the same as it used to be. So to exit, you hold the left shoulder button and click the trigger. That brings you back to the main menu. So let's give this another try. They don't have any problems here. FPS isn't a solid 120, but it's close. It's actually worse because I'm recording. I just realized some of the weird anomalies I'm seeing, you guys can't actually see. Oh, the game not stop running? Okay. Oh, it didn't. Okay, I must have crashed on exit. I highlight both of these. I don't think I can. Just sliding things around. Oh, it already exited. Okay. Um, yeah, Steam isn't going to launch the game now. I have to do it the old fashioned way. Yeah, I should probably switch. There we go. Theoretically, we should be fine now. I am noticing that issue with the game, though. When it fails to start, it leaves processes running, and then you can't relaunch the game. This is kind of a QA nightmare. I, I don't know who they had test this thing for them, but... If they're having the developers of the game do the QA testing, then that is the wrong way to do it. You need to have dedicated QA people, and they obviously, if you do have them, they obviously need to do a better job because there are things that I either didn't test or that didn't get fixed. Again, unskippable nonsense. Could you just give us a checkbox in the menu to turn that off? Because I don't need all this startup garbage. Okay, so our resolution should be lower, which has negatively affected our frame rate. But yeah, it's still it's still a CPU issue. We're camping out 
too high on a couple of CPU cores so the game won't run above 35 FPS. That is so sad. And it's, it's been since that hotfix. This wasn't happening originally with the update 29. So, like, some of the points I was going to make, some of the things I was going to complain about that they did with this game update, I'm not sure if there's much point because I can't even demonstrate how the game performed, you know, without this issue. So maybe I'll revisit this once they fix this. Yeah, I doubt that the developers are going to watch this, but you need to do better QA. Yeah, I know you can't necessarily have every VR device on the market, right? And I'm using a Vive Pro 2, which is a, it's a piece of junk. I don't recommend anybody buy the thing. In fact, I recommend that you avoid, like the plague, any Vive device that goes through Vive console. It's horrible software. But still, you'd think, you'd think that some more QA would have been done, right? I mean, when the game launched, it didn't work on the latest Vive Cosmos at all, apparently, because they forgot to add the the OpenXR plugin for the latest Vive Cosmos Elite or whatever it's called. It didn't work on the Vive Pro 2 either, because apparently you need to install a beta update for Vive console. They didn't bother saying anything about that. And I don't know. I just kind of get the feeling this wasn't tested on the Vive ecosystem at all. Or I don't know, maybe they just tested it on the original Cosmos and didn't test it on anything else. But I don't see how any Vive console device would have worked at all. Of course, it's always possible that whoever did the testing already had the beta installed and just didn't realize it. But this is obviously, you know, this is obviously just a bug that they need to fix. There are some underlying issues with the game's performance that I haven't gone in depth and checked yet. I hate that. But I suspect that the game is deferred rendered, which is usually a no-no in VR. You usually want to do forward rendered or forward shaded as Unreal Engine calls it. I mean, Unreal Engine 5 says that in forward shading mode, you get roughly about 22% better performance. So why wouldn't you do it? And obviously, not having an off for the anti-aliasing is a big deal. There should be an off for that. There's no reason to mandate that anti-aliasing be on. Granted, I haven't seen everything in the game. Maybe they did some dither temporal AA here and there, which requires temporal anti-aliasing. And it's always possible to have some stupid shader that breaks if the temporal anti-aliasing is off. Some games do that. Usually ones that never expected you to turn the temporal anti-aliasing off in the first place. Uh, one weird thing is that you can't back out of the menu. I don't know why. What have I done? Oh, the mod browser. I should probably cover the mod browser real quick. So they've deprecated uh, Steam Workshop support, and they're now using, is it itch.io or something like that? I can't remember for certain, but the mods are now installed through this interface instead of through you know, whatever they had before. So you've got some filters up here that don't work. Apparently, what? Maybe that only works if you do a search. Trouble in Terrorist Town. Can you? Nope. All right. Never mind. Also, no easy quick button to clear the search field. Seems kind of dumb, I guess. Maybe the refresh button is supposed to do that. Okay, yeah, it is. All right, so normally this would be in the search field and it would be an X button. It's a little weird to be a refresh button all the way over there. I didn't even see it at first. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. It serves the same purpose. It refreshes the list, brings you back 
you know, to the main page. So that's fine. So I've got a lot of options for what to sort by. Sorting by installed makes sense if you have anything installed that's an easy way to see them. So not installed, size 255 megabytes, download, uninstall. Is there a way to rate it up? Probably not. You probably have to have an itch.io account to rate things. I don't see a favorite option in here either, so I assume you'd have to get on itch.io to favorite it. I don't have any Steam friends who play this game. I don't know if they have their own friends. I haven't actually played a game in this in over a year, so. How does he spell his name? I do not remember. No results, okay. Yeah, I have no idea if that works or not. So I haven't checked any of these. They have a World War II themed shooting range with, I guess, World War II guns. Some modes you can play offline. A team deathmatch with bots, I guess. I do appreciate that they have offline modes. That way, if you don't want to play with other people, you don't have to. But there's no way I'm going to be playing this, and I don't think anybody else is. So, okay, you have to scroll up and down with your either your touchpad or your stick. You can't just click and drag unless you click the scroll bar. Okay, I don't like the fact that the latency on some of these is a name of a region instead of the name instead of the, the number in milliseconds. That's that's dumb, and shouldn't be a thing. Region should be separate from latency. So is that supposed to be sorted by lowest latency to highest? I mean, Europe is somehow lower latency than America. Well, this appears to be peer hosted, so that would explain why. So these are probably actual dedicated servers. Although then we have this one down here, which might... No, I don't know about that. Maybe all of these are peer hosted. There is a dedicated server software, but it may just show for the server name the Steam account used to log in. Assuming it requires it, I really don't know. Does it say if it's dedicated? Nope. Well, oh, they apparently do have crossplay now with PSVR 2. I don't know how that works. I Again, I have not even tried. Not with FPS like this. So overall, I'd say avoid the update until they can actually get things smoothed out. And hopefully I can make another video here soon. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone and have a nice day.